Nikita nerds out there. This is a little video about a conversion of this crappy Champion 20 that I found on eBay uh, to a Champ AA764 tube amp. I bought it for about 15 bucks and I thought it was a good starting point. Having a chassis, a cabinet, a grill cloth saves a lot of money and it's less labor intensive. Well, here's a look inside the Champion 20. A lot of electronic crap on two different PCB boards. And look at the electrolytic capacitors on the right side. They are cracked open. Who knows what happened to these filter caps. But anyway, these junk boards have to go anyhow. So everything got ripped out, ready for the junk pile. Well, here's a chassis already stripped naked, ready for the new layout. The empty cabinet was loaded with a chassis. Uh, already the new faceplate in place that I made out of a piece of aluminum sheet. When I decided to get rid of the speaker baffle, it was just a chipboard and I replaced it with this plywood board loaded with a nice uh, warehouse speaker. It's an 8 inch with 20 watts. Let's compare that to an original champ from the 60s. Believe it or not, the speaker baffle was a crappy chipboard too. The original Wimpy Oxford speaker didn't sound that good either. To get the look of my clone Closer to the original, I made a back door, and here it is, covered in Tolex and already installed to the cabinet. Another very important part that is really nice to have is this tube chart. So the cabinet is almost done. Let's flip over to the chassis. You can see it's equipped with the transformers and the tube sockets. But before we go ahead with the circuit, let's analyze some design flaws of the Fender Champ from the 60s. In this Fender chassis you can count at least 10 different ground connections. This is absolutely a no-no for any amp builder because this design can cause ground loops and makes the amp very noisy. The better way is to go with just two ground connections, one for the power supply and one for the signal path. Here is another fun one. There is only one wire for the heater circuit. The other half of the 6.3 volts of AC current goes directly to the chassis. No drilled heater wires, no center tap, no artificial center tap, to balance the heater supply, in other words, another source for 60 cycle hum. To avoid noise issues, I decided to go for a point-to-point -point wiring, which is a good idea, especially for a small amp without a bunch of components. So my circuit looks like this, two terminal strips, a ground bus for the signal path and one ground lug for the power supply, and that's it. Almost every component is connected to the tube sockets directly. Building an amp gives you always the opportunity for modifications. I did a few. Let's uh, take a look. The first red arrow points to two backup diodes connected to the rectifier tube. These diodes extend the lifespan of the tube and they protect the power transformer in case of a short. The second arrow shows the push-pull tone pot that can kill the tone stack completely and gives you kind of a raw tweet champ sound. This is a third modification, another push-pull pot in the volume position to switch off the negative feedback loop. That adds a little more grit and dirt to the sound. The last mod 
is this part on the back of the chassis, a master volume. Because even these 5 watt jokers can get so loud that a master volume is always a good idea. A look at the schematic shows another beneficial modification. Change the resistor that sets the mid-range in the tone stack from a 15k to a 6.8k value. That brings the sound of the champ closer to the sweet blackface sound of the Princeton reverb or the deluxe reverb that is so well known. And here it is, the AA764 Champ Amp clone, from crap to blackface glory. Modifications and improvements like point-to-point -point wiring, master volume, a switchable negative feedback, the tone stack mod, and last but not least, a more efficient speaker makes this little joker very versatile. So, if you ever come across a cheap Champion 20, Grab your solder iron and go ahead and convert it to a nice Fender Champ amp. It's worth it. If you have any questions, opinions or suggestions about this project, feel free to leave a comment down below.